All right. Um. So let's get started. Um. So welcome everyone to our. Uh. I mean, officially, I can say this is the first chapter of the book. The last week chapter was basically um intro um what we be seeing and uh, you know the format of the book club. Um. So for those that join us today, um, I hope you watch the uh, previous uh, week uh video so that you'll understand how the book club runs. Um, so this is the book we'll be going out for DS and make sure when you are referencing, we are going to do doing second edition. Um, and also, um, uh, as I said uh, last week, um, this is like a volunteer presentation. Um, and the more you volunteer present a chapter, the more you learn it better. We are all learners. So one good thing with r ds community is like, if you are presenting a chapter, it's not like you are perfect for that but you are learning so that you make sure that you, uh, you know, uh, understand it more. So please pretty and volunteer to present a chapter. Um, there uh, is a sign up sheet here. Uh, let me share the sign up sheet. Uh, sign up sheet, uh, presenter sign up. So if you look at the Slack channel, um, there is a pin post which says, um, uh, okay, here you go. So you can see here we have um, sign up sheets. So feel free to look for any chapter and just come here and write your name. So that's um, when you present. So feel free to do that. Um, there is no, um, and yeah. And also um, you can see like the book club, we prepare a note. So here is, for example, um, uh, which one is that? Uh, okay, so you can see this is uh, the GitHub repository for the book club. And there are many sessions, um, I mean, cohort, our own code is cohort eight, and you know, this is core seven. And now there is um, notes that is being prepared. So for example, when you are presenting, maybe you need not to prepare a new notes, right? Um, the, you can use existing notes that other people, you know, uh, but if you wanna add what you need to do is just, you know, um, clone this GitHub repository and, you know, do some edit and now push it back. Um, if you don't know how to use, GitHub and you know how to deal with this book club. There is um, you know Git for book clubs that um, uh, that has been prepared, and this one explain for example how to clone the GitHub repository, how to edit, how to post everything. You can go through this you know uh, GitHub for book club and uh, yeah. And if you want to learn more about the Git, this is a good good book. Uh, Git uh, Happy Git and Git for R. It's something that you can, you know, need at some point, and and I really enjoy the book. Um, yeah. Uh, then what else? So let me just ask um just a question. Do we all have um you know uh, I know Sandra and you know do we are we all familiar with R? We just want to get parted. Is there anyone here that this is first contact with R? Uh, last week because um uh, uh, we didn't have uh, some of us here. Um, are we all familiar like with R, R Studio and everything? Um, if you are not, just so that we can know how we can move. Hi, good evening, sir. Yes, thank you. Yeah, um, I feel very honored to have joined this meeting, uh, but it's actually my, best, my first experience with RRAM more or less a basic user so i wouldn't know how you could okay. help me get along ah, okay have you do you have r studio installed on your computer yeah i do, I do. Ah, okay good so everyone here have r studio right everyone has r studio so that's the point i want to make sure that we are all in the same you know page um yeah so um yeah, I think um, we can also see the book is very long, you know, chapter um, from one up to chapter 32. Uh, I don't know, like uh, in some weeks, um, I don't know what we're going to do, like some workflows. This is just like, uh, you know, um, a very something, you know, uh, I don't know if we say we're going to do each chapter one week, it will take us like next year, <laughs> not even next year, half of the next year. So maybe in, at some point we may be margin, you know, some chapters right uh because like some chapters are you know uh, small uh, uh so i think um um we can basically merge but we can see how we can get started because uh, yeah how we can do it. all right i share the book for the github and also let me share the 
uh, this video for the uh, yeah okay um hello Shan Shudi. Yes. good evening everyone good i was evening. talking about the place where you just shoot the notes how to ah, okay the notes. okay yeah this is it so you can you see this is if yeah you go the, to, yeah okay this one the note for the book the note no, no, no. for the book where you ah, okay. went into just ah, now. okay here yeah when you come here this is the note uh not about the book not about the book when you click so this is the note so let me share it so i share it in the chat um so you can see like people have already prepared these notes and uh, yeah so anyone wants to ask question before we dive in um please feel free to ask question if something that you are not familiar before we dive in uh because you are not here last day hi Hi, Hamza. It's nice to join this club. Uh, actually, I'm familiar with R and I did some basic uh, data analysis projects. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to know more about uh, Tidyverse ecosystem. Uh, that's ah, yes, exactly. This, mm -hmm. this club, yeah. yeah, cool. So um, one good thing, like, um, so uh, some people may be familiar with R, right? But this book is about Tidyverse, which is somehow kind of, you know, um, opinionated way to do our, you know, um, I, for me, Tidyverse is the best, right? So, yeah. uh, and easier to learn, you know, I mean, one good thing with Tidyverse is easier, you know, but, uh, but there are some, you know, uh, uh, argument, which is bad answer, but uh, personally for me, Tidyverse is easier to understand, you know, it's just like natural language. So if you want to select something, you just select, you tell it, you know, if you want to delay, you know, all those, if you want to filter something, all those kind of, you know, um, terms, they are really, uh, yeah. And one yeah, good thing, like, uh, yeah, one good thing, like, uh, when we, um, when we are um, actually maybe somewhere uh, uh, around the book, we learn a lot. What I envisage is like, we're going to be doing something called um, uh, Tidy Tuesday. Uh, we can, I mean, uh, see how we can do that. So what I want is this. So that is what is called Tidy Tuesday. All of us know, maybe not all, um, Tidy Tuesday is like kind of weekly practice for um, art, visualization and art practice. But um, um, for some of us, like they just started using art, it may be like when the, the data set is released, it may be somehow not easier for you because you don't know much about art to you know follow the trend. What I will do uh, maybe when we uh, maybe somewhere along the book, that is what is called our screencast, which is basically a recording of how to do analysis in R by um, by uh, uh, David Robinson. Um, we all know, I think David Robinson is one of the, um, you know, uh, I, I enthusiastic he does um, with Julius Lege, um, tidy, uh, tidy Text Mining. So he has recording of Tidy Tuesday since 2020, uh, not 2020, uh, all this since 2018, if you want to practice your skills for R, just come here. Like it is even he provide you see the the uh, screen card code, the code, so you can you know what's how he does it. For example, this week, uh, college majors in income. But let's see another one. Maybe share with the newest. Um, for example, Kenya census, right? So Kenya census, you can come on here and you watch the video, view the code, practice it yourself. You know. So this is what I say, like, um, um, if you want to learn and practice along the way, maybe we can adapt one week. We say, okay, let's practice this. Um, as they said, a good artist borrow, but a great artist steal. So you can steal the code, just learning as practice. Um, one day, like one month, two months, three months, you will now be, we, you can now do it yourself without copying, you know, um, but you build the skills. So, um, uh, this is something good where maybe we can uh, look at uh, later while in the book that we can pr be practicing something. Okay, I think it's good now. Um, we can start. Um, anyone with question before we dive in? No, I just wanted to say that I think that that's a great idea of practicing Tidy Tuesdays along the way. <laughs> yeah, I never yeah. did it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I think one of the key blocker for people to practice sometime for me, even for me, Tidy Tuesday when I started beginning, like I don't have the enough skill to practice yeah but what yeah but what i think here is that 
<laughs> you have the code, you have the watch the video. Mm. Just try mm. to replicate it. When you are replicating two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, you replicate like 20 times, then you can just go and even start following the current ID Tuesday every week because you yeah. get enough yeah. skills. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. so um we will um maybe we can discuss this and uh, like uh, we can say, hey, let's look at it in this. Uh, can we practice this one? So everyone of us can go and practice, and now we can, you know, in one week, maybe last 20 minutes of our uh, discussion or 10 minutes of the discussion weekly. Um, we, so one person maybe can just pop up the screen and just present the that week uh, what we select and that will enhance while we are doing we are also doing the practice and also believe that yeah. the best way to learn is just doing project no any mm. shortcut mm -hmm. yeah the best yeah. way to learn programming and this stuff is through project yeah through going through the book you know and one good thing we tell you to say like every week you are pressing different data set you are getting you know um you know um, you are getting used to different kind of data, a different Langlin approach, different. Today you do text, tomorrow you do, you know, um, uh, maybe time series and many, you know, even uh, shiny. So in here also, he does some shiny stuff and a lot of other things. So you can see like mm -hmm. more than 20. Um, yeah. So if you go here, for example, we can select this. Kenya corpus. We go to the uh, view code. So you can see the code. One good thing is... Um, uh the okay this one uh okay so there is one that even the code is annotated so what i mean by this i will share it i'm not sure here i didn't know i didn't see there is one that i saw like if you see this code then somebody annotate this code that this is doing this this and that for example this rejects this rejects um you can see like this has been annotated um i will share maybe the one so the annotated so people have annotated this screencast for david robinson um, for every function that this function is doing. So if you are practicing, you don't know what this function does, it's already annotated. So you can just learn along the way while practicing. So I don't know if you think this is a good way um, so that we can discuss it maybe along the way when we're doing. Yeah, yeah that's I think it is. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we will um, do that. Uh, yeah, so thank you all. Um, right, um, can you see my studio? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um for those of us, um, I want to also ask another question. Do we all know what is called R Markdown? If you don't know, just say it. Um yeah, I have used this fine. Uh, before, so, so anybody here generic. that yeah, good. Anybody that haven't used R Markdown here? Hello, well, sir. Not yes. really. Okay, no. Yeah, I, I mean, I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever used it. Okay, okay, cool. So um, uh, let me say this. So what we're going to do is we are going to use um, what is called R Markdown. So this is R Markdown. R Markdown allows you to write text, combine text, and also code. For example, here you can see we have code, we have text. Um, here, if you want to get like a quick glimpse of what R Markdown is, you can come to chapter... Um, 2029 R Markdown is very simple. It's very, very simple. Just come to 29 so that you will understand what we are doing along the way. In fact, there is a book for R Markdown book. So you can see this is R Markdown, a definite guide if you want to go deep into the R Markdown. But uh, for a short start, I can suggest like you can go to R Markdown and read some stuff um, because we'll be using it uh, to generate. So this book um, that we are going to see has been generated using R Markdown. Um, yeah. So um, what is this chapter is about is data visualization. And the main uh, thing that we're going to see is that um, data visualization uh, about ggplot2, which is basically the grammar of graphic that you use for plotting. Um, when you want to do plotting in R, ggplot2 is, is the bus stop, is the stop where you, everything that you want to do is there. And the book, um, for every chapter you can see here, we have like that, like learning objectives when you want to do. So here, the learning objectives for this chapter is, um, what is this? Okay, the learning objectives of this chapter is for us to understand how to load package, how to, you know, produce a single graph, plot using ggplot2, and, you know, um, see the whole ggplot2 at the end of the day. Um, so, um, before we start, um, in R, whatsoever you want to do, you do what you, you do with what is called package. 
So a packet is something that allows that contain a collection of uh, um, functions or collection of uh, you know uh, features that allow you to achieve a particular task. In tidyverse, um, the main horsepower is called tidyverse package. So um, before we do anything in R, you need to load library. So for us, for those of us that are new, um, if you don't have the package installed, you need to install the package first. Uh, let me show this. Um, if you don't install a, a, your package, you can uh, just do something like this: install the package, and now you put in this brace, and you can say that um, you can put the name of the package. So here we can say tidy um, verse, for example. Uh, yeah, something like this, and now we can run this. So we, when we run this. This will um, uh, install tidy bus for us. So this is what this means: is that um, use this to install a package. Um, here you can see under the disco is name of the package. But if you already have your package, what you need to do is to load the package. So we can see here that um, um, we load the package here, and now it's showing us some you know uh, warning here. But also you can um, basically not load the package. Um, the idea is when you want to do um, R, you load the package at the beginning of all your experiment. But sometimes we don't load it, so you can use this way. Uh, so yeah, you can see it here. But alternatively, you can use, if I don't load a package at the top, so I can call the, this package um, ggplot. Um, we can call ggplot2. And now if I want to use something, I can call it like directly, we can say, uh, for example, gg, ggplot, um, you know. So if you don't call a package at the top like this, okay, let me show you the differences. So for example, here I have this. And now let me say I wanted to, um, uh, which data set is available in R? Uh, 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 yeah, okay. So ggplot2, um, ggplot2, okay. Um, so when I run this, so you can see um, data, you know, this data is available in tidyverse package. Now, if I already that um, load my library here, so I wanna filter this data set, I can just use this like this. Um, uh, uh, I can just call a package called filter. Uh, or I can just, if I want to select some column, I can say select um, this column, I can say one, column two, I can say two. So here, when I run this guy, you can see me column one and column two, right? Because I load um, my live tidyverse. If I don't load tidyverse here uh, at the beginning, um, what I, what I, I want to just use, because this function select is from tidyverse, what I want to do is just call ggplot ggplot and um, while you are doing this you remember when you put a name of the packet you can do scroll like this i can say ggplot and now i can say select so you can see here if i don't load any package at the top you can use any function from those using this uh, feature this double column and now you can use this uh, yeah i think select this uh, either uh, ah. deeper, yeah yeah i think yeah yes. ah, okay um uh, yeah okay sorry um no problem so it, but that, that's the the main idea right that you can yeah, just call yeah. it by package and then yeah, function yeah. If you don't exactly yeah yeah so you can see here this is something that uh also but uh if you we have the tidy verse here the tidy verse contain everything here right and um the, the best way um, is just call your package like this and how you call all other. Don't worry about this thing that you see that I'm just explaining. Um, you will see it um, later in the book, but I just want to show you like um, how this is. And also you can see some kind of warning here. Um, this is telling you that there is some package been, you know, uh, been filtered. So this is the what I want to do, um, which is max by deployer. That's why I have that error. But if you don't want to see this kind of error, when you are using, uh, so when I run this guy, um, okay, uh, if you don't want to see this error, you can, you know, chunk, you can say it's false, uh, one is false, so when you run this one, one is for, you will not be able to see this kind of error like this. So this is, for example, the first thing, um, how you can load your package. And um, the next thing is, um, 
how to do visualization using ggplot2. Now, for us to use ggplot2, and um, what in fact is ggplot2? So ggplot2 is what we call gg means grammar of graphic. That is what the meaning of gg. Uh, plot means plot. Two means, um, I think uh, why we have two is that previously there was ggplot, but now the current ggplot2, they call it ggplot2. And it was based on what we call grammar of graphics book by this guy, um, Len Winkson. Uh, he developed a kind of graphic system, which is in, in some way grammar that is layered uh, approach. So that's this is the base, um, I mean, the package that we'll be using for um, you know, doing any kind of stuff. So how does it work? What they said is layered. Um, for us to use ggplot to, to make any uh, plotting, what we need to do is just to call ggplot, and now we put something like this plus, and now we put some you know uh, geom, geom uh, stuff. But here, as you can see, we have like the geom blank. We use geom blank. That is why here we have blank stuff. But if, what about if we want to use a uh, bar chart, you know, uh, whatsoever? Then the geom you're gonna use is called geom bar, meaning geo plot bar chart, right? So let's look at the graphing template. So for example, here I want to use um, scatter plot. So you can see I put ggplot. And now I put the first argument should be your data. So you can see data, you provide the data, MPG data. Now you put this plus, and now you provide the kind of geom you want, which is geom point. Geom point means uh, scattered plot. And now you provide what is called mapping. So every um, geom has a mapping. So here you can see I'm geom point, but there are many um, geom. For example, you want to do bar chart, flow chart. I mean, whatsoever chart you, there, there is geom for that. Uh, we'll see that. Uh, let me show us here. So you can see here, for example, geom. Can you see geom bar, geom, you know, many geom box flow, geom column, geom, uh, whatsoever. Uh, you can you see them. So there are many ones. So um, when I want to do scattered flow, so I need to say geom point. It means I'm telling this guy plots. Um, scattered plot, but which data? So when you say ggplot to ggplot, you provide the data here. Um, you can even, um, you know, you can even say, okay, uh, since the first, um, you can even do like this. Um, so you can see I put this, uh, you can see my R studio, right? Yes. Okay, so you can see because the first argument of ggplot is data, you can even remove this data. Uh, you, you don't need to do, you can just use this and run this guy. Can you see it's still the same thing? Um, in fact, you can even remove this um, uh, mapping, I guess, and you can run this guy. Can you see that? Um, so we'll come to that um, because if you look at this um, ggplot here, uh, you can see like um, the first argument is data. So since the first argument is data, that is why you can, even the jump, uh, jump point, the first argument, if we look at it, is mapping, so you can remove the mapping equals to and leave this one. Now, how do I open this um, help? What I need to do is just put my cursor here and now put F1, uh, function F1 in Mac, so it open my, you know, this stuff so that I can read a uh, description of this stuff. So this is basically how you can do. Um, so the mapping, what is specifying is, what is X axis, what is Y axis? So this is what it means. So here you can plot the first argument is x axis. Can you see is this? Way. The second argument is y axis. So this is it. And now you can see you are not the one that specify here this number 40, 30, whatsoever. ggplot2 will automatically, you know, uh, put everything for you. Like what is uh, vertical, what is horizontal, will automatically calculate it for you. So this is basically, you know, what we call the geom um, template. So you provide ggplot data. Can you see that? So here you provide the data and you can do this stuff. So here you can see we have uh, another structure. So here instead, for example, to put plus um, here, we can do another thing. So I think um, uh, we'll come to that uh, for now, but what this is telling us instead of using this, we can use something like this. Um, no, no use something like this so here you can see the ggplot we can have the mapping inside this one here mapping so we can have the mapping mapping yes equals to this so we can have the mapping inside the ggplot and now here we can just have what is called gg point um can you see
Can you see that? So this is different way also you can have the mapping, but remember when you have this, well, let me remove this around this. Can you see it also work? You provide the AEC here. So, um, and you have the jump point here. So here, this is, you can see this is it. So jump, uh, GG plot two, uh, jump, describe which kind of plot you want to do. Um, the mapping specify what is X, what is Y, the aesthetic define what is exact, like the appearance of that. Um, yeah, so the rest of this chapter basically discusses how can we modify our plot to make it maybe, uh, you know, uh, 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 to put many plot or to facet it or whatsoever, different way to deal with ggplot. And that's what we discussed. And also um, sometimes if you want, you don't know a, a function, for example, jump point, um, if you wanna see, wanna see the help, um, you can do like this. Uh, okay, I wanna do jump point like scatter plot, but I forgot some of stuff that scatter plot some argument. You can do it like this and now open the help. Oh, you can just run this guy. So when you run this guy like this, help it will open for you the oh no. It will open for you jump point and you can read um what is it, everything. You can do the argument and you can read even the example. You can see that how to use the jump point. You can read the example. Oh, okay. This is how to do that. Okay. You can just read an example. So this is something useful if you want to find out more about something. Um, um, so where the tidy bus come from? So Tadivas, as I already said, is a, a kind of a philosophy of um, opinionated stuff. So if you come here, or uh, not that, not this guy, um, Tadivas, Tadivas. So if you come to here, Tadivas, you can see Tadivas is a kind of a collection of many things. So you can see here, Tadivas, we have ggplot2, we have dplyr, we have focal, we have read r, we have table, we have string r, we have tidy r, we have par. So Tidyverse is a collection of many packages that allows you to do data analysis in R. ggplot2 is only for uh, plotting. Dplyr is for data analysis, like uh, pandas in R in Python. Read R is for reading files. String R is for manipulating R um, text. If you are dealing with text, like you know, you want to do something. R is some tidy R is you know also. Table is somehow, I mean, we will discuss this maybe if this is your first thing, you may know. So if you want to install all these packages, you just need to run tidy, uh, install package tidy bus. But if you want to install ggplot only, you can put ggplot. If you want to install this, you know, so you can see this is a collection of R packages designed to work for data science. Yes. So, yes. I just wanted to ask for that geom, you know, because you already know that there is a geom point, but someone mm -hmm. may not know all of the different kinds of geom. So can I mm -hmm. just do that? I saw it place the geom function. Is that where it would tell me the different kinds of geoms and what to select? Ah, okay. So for example, here, um, geom. Um, can you see geom? So when I say geom area, yes, I can. So when I say here, um, geom bar, you can see like. Um, you can see something here comes here, tip like telling uh, what kind of bag, what kind of plot you have. Yeah, can you see they can't chart? find the bag. I left my my bag with bread and all that. Sorry, sorry. Hello. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Go ah, ahead. okay. So what I'm saying, like now you want to use plot, um, maybe a bar chart or whatsoever, any kind of maybe box plot. You don't know what. So when you come here, you will see like it is telling you what kind of, um, you can see like a tip telling you what kind of uh, um, plot is that. So I think this is helpful um, uh, telling you what kind of, uh, you know, but you become accustomed with different kind of this plot uh, as you go along, you, as you practice. Um, yeah, because you can see now there are many, more than like 20, it's not, possible for like for histogram it's not possible just now to say like i know all of them but it just like it will come as you want to do you just google how can i do in uh, so for example th this is what i do now if i want to do something in r this is what i do um for example you said you want to do plot maybe histogram so uh plot i can say plot histogram histogram um uh, ggplot2 so um, uh, there is something really cool, um, uh, grab 
gallery that shows you many kind of plotting system that you can just copy. Uh, so if I want to use um, ggplot for basic histogram, you can see there are many examples. You can come here and just copy them. You know, this is just like a container of library, I mean, examples of using like, you know, different kind of plot in R. You know, chart type, you can select, maybe you want to use, you know. So um, one thing like you asked, so you can see like any plotting that you want to do maybe for uh, one good, where, where I, what I do mostly, if I want to use a kind of plot, I sometimes come here, I like look for an inspiration. So if I want to use, um, for example, a box plot, oh God, box plot, I can just come here, I read, you know, um, you know, uh, get inspiration on different kind of box plots. So when you click um, here, uh, maybe I want to see this maybe when you click here, you can see the example of box load. Uh, you can you see that um, a lot of other things. So yeah, I don't know if I answer your question. Extremely well, thank you. Right, okay. So, um, okay, so let's move on. Um, um, so this book has a lot of exercises, but uh, I think it will not, uh, will not be able to cover the exercise. But uh, it's gonna be good for all of us after this, maybe to go through the exercises. Uh, maybe if we have much time, because today is uh, beginning, maybe we'll not be able. So you can see here um, the data visualization. You can see like uh, there is exercises after this. Um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Aesthetics. Uh, okay, there is no exercises here. Yeah, you can see exercises. Run this. What do you see? How many rows are in this? Um, you can see you can try these exercises um, uh, as we go along. That will, you know, uh, keep your understanding intact. I think so. It's good to practice these exercises uh, on your on yourself. But if we have time, some if you are presenting and you think you there is much time, we can go through the exercise also. The reason why I'm not going through the exercise today is like this is some of us is just their beginning. So if you just go through the exercises, it would be difficult for them to follow up, but uh, I will encourage us to go through the exercises. Um, this book also has the solution for the exercises. So if you come here, R for data science exercise solution. So for each chapter, there is solutions. Uh, so you can see like first exercises, what do you see? You know, there is explanation of the exercises. So it's good like as you practicing, don't open the exercises, try it yourself, and I'll come back and see um, whether you have answered the questions correctly. Okay, um, let's move on. So um, there are different kind of geometry, as I said, point, line, smooth, whatsoever. That's what I showed us, like different kind of geometry, um, where uh, I show here, geom, 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 you know, area, geom, geom, line. Can you see geom line, um, you know, whatsoever? So that we have many of them, but you will learn as well. So uh, that's why I was saying like when we are using this Tidy Tuesday. So I will call this Tidy Tuesday that we'll be doing like um, Tidy Tuesday Revisit or Tidy Tuesday. I don't know. Maybe we can give it. Um, Sandra, what, what good name do you think we, because we will not be following maybe the current Tidy Tuesday. We'll be, you know, <laughs> just following oh, this. Oh, I see. Yeah, let what, me think of a good catchy name. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we can think of it after like a catchy name that because we are doing so we yes we say like yeah we are not doing the current one but uh, we are following the previous the old one because we want to steal the ideas and you know learn and grow from them. Okay, yeah, let's move that on. Sounds okay, good. then aesthetics. We have different kind of aesthetic as well. So I said we have aesthetics. What is what is the aesthetic? So aesthetic is some kind of mapping that that change the look of give the look of your. Um, you know, ggplot uh, stuff. So there are many aesthetics that you can give the size, the shape, the color, the feel, many kind of different aesthetics you will see. Um, yeah, so here I displayed the data. We have MPG data, I wanna see it. So I had um, three, give us the first three rows. Uh, we can see the data is in table. Table is a data frame, it's in R, um, different from the normal traditional data frame in R. And basically we can, uh, you can see one of the aesthetic is I can uh, use a color. So you can see here, I see jump point mapping. This is it. I put the X axis around. And now I want to give my, because this jump point is a scatter plot, right? But I want to use like a blue color. You can see the color is blue. So you can see like um, this 
variable color is not inside the uh, aesthetic. So now how can you, so for example, let me show something. So if I wanna use this, um, I can say, okay, um, something like this. Okay, so you can see here, um, um, I have like um, geom point mapping this. Now, when I put comma here, you can see like, just I put a comma, press tab, you can see many other argument that you can use for geom point. You can see I have like start, position, and a show legend whatsoever, mapping whatsoever, you can see that. So there are many kind of um, stuff uh, that you can use. And this one is other. So here we have um, color. And, and that's why here we use, um, you know, the color here. So, yeah. So that's the day. And here, um, sometimes people, one of the uh, era mistake they do is like, they put this like aesthetic for the color inside this aesthetic. So here you can see we use the same thing, AES, this one, but the color is inside the mapping, inside the aesthetic, and now it doesn't give you the color. Can you see that it gives you? So make sure that the color aesthetic that is not inside this uh, aesthetic object. And yeah, and as you can see here, um, the type, um, the ggplot automatically gives you this. You, you didn't tell um, ggplot2 in y axis, put HYW, it automatically put the name of the variable you have here. It automatically put the name of the variable. Sometimes in Python, you see, you need to do in multiple and stuff like that. And also it automatically put this color is blue because you specify the color. This is all you need. Uh, uh, ggplot2 is awesome. It automatically does this, for you. but you can cost, um, you know, tweak many other things. You can see once you map an aesthetic, ggplot2 takes care of the rest. It selects the reasonable scale to use. You can see we did not specify the scale series. It selects the reasonable scale. Um, because here you can see it select like 20, 30, 40. Um, here it is too, because the data set here, hit, uh, this one is like in this range. So it selects these scales automatically. And this data point, this, it does is not large. Like the scale is not large. It selects automatically the, uh, this. So ggplot2 this, do this automatically for you. Um, also, you can specify, for example, um, the size of everything. So here we can see like we want to specify the size, which we provide the class from the data set. You can see the data set we have um, class here, which is this. So we specify the class. Um, yeah, so you can see here we have the class. But you can see when we specify the class, the, um, you know, the points here, they are, you know, stuck, um, put together in one place. So how can you like make sure that they are not these uh, in some ways, you, so you can provide the what is called um, alpha, uh, alpha, which you know shows this stuff like in very useful way that uh, allows you to visualize this stuff. And also, you can um, you know say the yes. So, so the alpha is replacing the size in the class. Yeah, yeah. So here you can see here we said the size. Size is um, uh, uh, one of the variable here we say use a class, but it turns out that uh, you can see we are using a discrete variable, um, discrete variable here as our size is discrete. So, and it's also very, um, there are many, very many points there so that it's not, you know, well stuff. So what we can do here is we could have map class to the alpha aesthetic, which control the transparency. So here, when we map alpha, if you have such kind of this stuff, so map that variable to alpha, so it map, uh, you know, the transparency, uh, they are not, you know, big enough, you'll be able to see them. So you can see here, like it's still the same thing, but uh, you know, the transparency is different. Okay, um, so also we can, uh, um, um, uh, you know, uh, provide, you can see here what we do here in this sense. Uh, ah, okay, it's all right. Um, I explained this one for the color already. Um, yeah, anyone with question before we move? Oh, okay, we have, <laughs> let me move faster. Oh, okay, we have, we are here. Um, yeah, so um, common problems with, um, you know, while you're working with R. Um, so as you still learning R, you know, you will just face problem. That's that's normal, you know what I mean? Um, when you are doing programming, but um, it happens for everyone, right? Um, so just bear with it. And um, when, uh, 
very problem uh, mistake that people beginners do is for when they are doing, uh, for example, when they are doing something uh, here in, uh, in my terminal, you can see like I want to put one plus three plus, uh, and uh, I didn't finish anything. You can see I need to finish it, but when I put enter, you will see plus here. You can see plus here. This is telling you that the previous command you run is problematic. You need to go and, you know, yeah, of course, because I have one plus three plus, I need to put another number. But, uh, you know, so what this is telling you that when you see a plus here, it means the previous code you run has some error. So now um, what you need to do is just press escape. So I press escape. Now it brings me to the normal, um, you know, console. So this is something that you should be aware is like, uh, yeah, one of the error. Um, but also um, one thing we should know is, um, uh, for example, in ggplot2, uh, you can see here I have plus here. One may put this plus must come at the end here. One may say, okay, let me put the plus here. When you run this guy, it will look at what it gives you, right? So it must be here, um, the plus here. Right? Because there are some stuff that you um, learn as and you know uh, come to understand them as you go along and correct them while you are doing. So this is something um, you should know. Um, yeah. Um, any question? And there is one um, also um, um, what I want to tell you that I find it really, really handy and useful. Um, so I was yesterday all day, some last week in the Slack community um, here in R for Data Science. Um, I saw somebody give like a um, suggestion. So for example, if I want to do something in R, and I'm, I don't know a package that does that. So what I can do is um, I, I, I want to work on something related to emoji. So I try to do what just search. I just search like uh, emoji in R in Google, in, in Google, but it turns out that all those options are not great. But it turns out that when I do some kind of search, it gives me the better option to see some packages that use emoji. So what I do is like this. I put emoji. Now, you use this site, you say site, and now you provide um, the site for um, R, um, what, does, what is the name of the site for R? Um, R, what is it called? Or, is it uh, CRAN? Yes, CRAN, yes, CRAN, yes, CRAN. Uh, let me see this, R CRAN. Let me go, okay. Um, yeah, R site CRAN. So what this means is that, this I'm want, I want to work with emoji. I want to find package that works on emoji in R. But like it turns out that when I do the Google, I cannot see them. But there are tons of packages I didn't know that are in R that really simplify my tax. So when you put this like this and now put this here, uh, what I can see only two options. I don't know what is going on. Um. Oh, oh, God. Okay. Anyway, um, I will come back to this. I don't know what's happening. Do you want to give it the actual CRAN site or? Yes, is it yes. Actual CRAN site. Project? Actual CRAN. Oh, not this one. Actual CRAN site. What is it? Actual CRAN. I heard. Okay, hold on, let's see. Maybe this one, right? Yes, maybe. Yes, this one. It's a uh, um, emoji site. You know, that would be. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Sandra. So you can see, like, the oh. package emoji, it will give me, it will search all the CRAN website looking for word emoji. And you can see like tidy emoji, emoji, emoji package, emoji. You know, you can see, you can see a lot of packages that, you know, anything from emoji, you know, in R, CRAN, that emoji. So when I was doing, I just click on this tidy emoji. It just solved my issue. And also this one emoji just solved my issue. So this is something like a cool way if you want to do something in R and you don't know the package that allow you to do, just use this approach and put the thing you want to do, like maybe I want to do maybe 
uh, maybe what I can uh, what can I say? Uh, sentiment analysis, sentiment. Then I can write it. So you can see, you can see package sentiment. You can see another package called sentiment analysis. You can see another package called sentiment R. You can see another. Can you see them? So this is a cool way. I find it useful, you know, working with uh, this. Um, yeah. Okay, let's move on. Um, anyone whose question? I, I digress to another thing, but I think it's also useful. That was useful. Yes, thank you. I'm writing um, it down. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so um, yeah, this one here, they talk about Tidy Tuesday, um, which we say we will start, we will do, be doing. And also they talk about Googling, but this Googling, I told you the best way to do Googling. And also, if you don't know this one, I show how to do this, um, you know, put the name. And also in Slack, in this our community, um, we have the Slack community, just go to um, help our channel, uh, help, help our, just type your question within an hour, within a few minutes, people will respond to you. No dumb, sorry, no dumb question just ask it you know what i mean sometimes i can remember when i was new in this r4ds community i was so shy to you know ask question in general <laughs> what i do is i just go into inbox for someone that i saw he first answered my question twice i just go to his inbox i tell hey i want to do this can you help me but it turns out that um because i was you know um i, I was shy to make you know but feel free like to just ask now i just no matter how the question dump the question is i just jump send it into the community people will just answer your comment yeah so feel free to that you can grow and you know do stuff many stuff um facet there is something called facade oh we have a few minutes to go um the minute let me run quickly so oh, oh, no so we have facade so what this facade means is that um it divide your data so here you can see like um I have my uh, my usual uh, 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 plot that we did, uh, ggplot2. But now here, I want to pass it the data into um, each, where I have a variable called class. So I want to use these to pass it into, you can see the variable class has two seater, it's a car, compact, mid-size, so each one is this. And now here, I provided n row, number of row, I want to see the, this is two. You can see number of row is three, then you're going to have like three rows, stuff like that um yeah so this is allows you uh to subgroup visualization facet allow you to subgroup visualization into multiple one um so uh and also a facet wrap allows you to uh, wrap a single variable so single variable i have class what about if you have two variable uh, you can use um first grid facet grid so here you can see we have facet wrap single variable Facade grid um, wrap two variable. That is the only difference. We have geometric objects. So here you can see what I already explained. Um, here I we have mapping this stuff. I show Hello, you that. Sir. Yes. Sorry, uh, I didn't get. I'm so sorry for that call. I didn't get what uh, you said about facet wrap versus only facet. What was the difference? Ah, so facet wrap allows you to um, uh, you know uh, plot multiple small multiple plot for a particular variable, one variable. So you can see here, I have class only, class variable, you can see that. And you use the tilde sign, and now you specify the number of rows. So only one variable. But what about if I have two variables that I wanna facade them? So here you can put one variable, the second variable, and use this formula sign here, and now you can have your two variables. So that's uh, facade grid and facade wrap. Um, we have these, um, um, so here you can see geom smooth. Uh, you can see, as I said, we have different kind of geom. So this is geom smooth. So you can see this is geom point. This is scatter plot. This is a geom smooth, which is this way. Um, uh, okay, so geom smooth. Um, uh, yeah, so this is it. And you can also, um, you know, provide a group variable to do group. Uh, we have a few more minutes to go. That's why I'm running. So you can also combine multiple plots in one plot. So here you can see I have two plots, geom smooth and scattered. So here I can see I have my data, GG plot, and have my data. I have my GG geom point, which is scatter plot. You can see the scatter plot. And now I put plus um, geom smooth. I can you can see. So this is to combine multiple plots. Um uh, you can also like um because now here there is problem. When I change update my X. That I will, because I duplicate this one here. I duplicate in, in programming is very bad idea to keep duplicating something, something, something. So here, this is it. 
there's something that I write here. So we want to avoid this situation. So what you can do is like you can take the mapping to the uh, ggplot, and now you can just put jump point, jump smooth. It will they will all use this x and y at the top because they use the same x and y. So you can just put it at the top. Um, you can see here, but also you can basically, um, you know, uh, change the stuff. So for example, here I use ggplot2. I provide a e x x is this and y is this. But for jump point, I I did something as a mapping. You can see I say use color, which is class. So for jump point, it will add this one, but it will still use the X and Y for this. But I added some functionality only for jump point to use color, but jump swim, I don't use the color. So this is something also useful that you see from the book. But you can also use um, you know, different data. So here you can see ggplot. I use the same data MPG, mapping AX and this. And now jump point that I will see. But the jump smooth, I don't want to use the complete data set. So I can filter it. Still, I combine it. So I can filter this MPG, our existing data set. Maybe I um, filter, remove something. I use some subset. So meaning that you can do a lot of stuff, you know, um, with this uh, ggplot. Um, any question? OK, so um, statistical transformation. Um, so let's look at a diamond data set in R. Um, so here, this is a, a, a data set with Five approximately fifty-four thousand diamond, including price, carat. You can see, like you can see, we can see them. Um, ideal, premium, gold, premium. This is the carat. And now we use the head diamond to see some sample here of the data set. And now we can see that um, we can see that um, uh, um, we want to plot like bar chart, right? So because this is our data set called diamond. You can just say ggplot, um, ggplot data you provide the diamond, and now you will use geom bar, right? Remember, geom bar means um, uh, geom bar means uh, bar chart, and you provide the mapping. AES, what you want to do is X, you want to put like cut. So we want to put only one variable, cut. You can see that uh, uh, it's somewhere here. So you can see we put only cut. There is no Y. So you can see like variable. Fair, good, very good video. But there is no Y here. So ggplot2 will automatically calculate the Y because fair, we have this number. Good, we have this number. Cut, we have this number. Um, you know, uh, Premium, we have this number. So ggplot2 will automatically calculate the numbers here and put the count. So you can see we didn't provide count here. ggplot2 will automatically write count here. Previously here, we um, ggplot2 will select this is the X axis display, it will write it. Y axis, HWY, it's write it. But here we didn't provide because um, we only use, so ggplot2 would do this automatically for you. So this calculate the count for each cut. Um, yeah. Um, um, yeah, so this um, you can use alternatively, like geom by here, you can use um, another thing like stat count the same thing. So using start count will give you the same one here. Uh, what is happening when you use jump bar without this, um, I, at the background is using what is called start count to automatically calculate uh, this stuff. So you can see, you can generally use jump and start interchangeably. For example, you can create the previous plot with start count like this. Um, yeah. Uh, what is happening here? <laughs> Oh, interesting. Oh, <sighs> okay. Maybe something along the way. Uh, I did a mistake. Okay. Um, we have a few more minutes. Uh, let me. Uh, maybe we can. Uh, yes. Uh, do you have a timeline for this club? Must it end in a year or, or or three months or one month? Because I think that some of us are not in a hurry. I don't know. <laughs> Ah, okay. Yeah, there is no timeline. There is no timeline. So I know yeah. of a club that was running even up to one year. Yeah, this one, there is no timeline. So there is no worry. Yeah. That but we can that, take that, time. Yeah. Yeah. But the idea is um, for each um, um, meeting, we have like one hour, but uh, we can also move like one hour. No, no, no. Hours. I don't mean to extend the one hour. It's the okay. number of days, like, no, you know, number Saturday, you know. Oh, like you to mean... continue on Saturdays and just keep continuing, but one hour really, but not like we must finish ah. the whole chapter in that one hour. We can yeah, continue yeah, yeah. it. Yes, exactly. Week. 
Yes, yeah. it is every week. This book club is every week. Um, yeah, so like chapter two now. If you had done maybe 2.1, 2, and 3, ah, oh, and okay. extensively, you could have done 4, 5, and 6, something like ah. that. Like, <laughs> okay. So, I don't know. I'm just saying with the way ah. it is so that people can get it and get it once, you know. Ah, uh-huh. Still good for yeah. us to go back and practice, but then yeah, yeah. now so take the idea, time for you. Yeah, the idea is... um. Well, the idea is everyone that comes to the session ex- ex- expected to read the chapter before coming. And also we can discuss, but I get your idea. Um, we can basically, you know, go through that. Um, I mean, trying to see if we can divide the sessions into multiple uh, so that we can go, um, yeah. But one thing also we can see that, um, because like if we said that uh, we divide the chapters, it will take us like a year. See? So, but uh, it's good, um, let's see what will happen. Uh, because today you remember I you know spend like 20 minutes explaining the book club and other stuff. That is why I didn't manage to yeah, finish yeah. the chapter. Also, yes. Yeah. So fair. yeah, but also if we um we are not in hurry, people like if we can the chapter is not finished, we can add like a 10 to 20 minutes to make sure that we finish the chapter. Um then one week is enough for us, like even if we do it fast, one week is enough for everyone to go and practice. Watch the video if you don't understand something ask question in the Slack channel and whatsoever. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to something again. So this is something called position um, argument. So today I think we can add like 15 more minutes to finish the chapter um, so that uh, because I uh, spent some time, you know, doing some other stuff. So uh, I don't know what is happening here. Um, let me please go. Okay, let me make sure that nothing is wrong here. Let me go there and see what is happening. So that, um, we finish here, we finish this one. Uh, statistical, we are here. Uh, I think maybe all this one. Let me think uh, from where do we have position argument? Okay, let me see. I cannot find. Um, okay, it's after. Okay. Um, Okay, let me see. Can you see my RCO? Yeah, Sham, you can just continue from your R Studio. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. you don't have to, you know, like okay. render it or edit to the. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you can see, let me continue the R Studio. So, positional argument, uh, adjustment, what that means is that you can color a bar chart using either the color aesthetic or more useful field. So let's look at this. This is our data set like head uh, diamond. So head is telling you like, just give, you know, the head, um, you know, the sample of the data. So I can put like here 10, it will give me like 10, right? But when you, you just use head, it just give you the top five, I guess, right? What is happening? I think it's top six. What am I doing? Uh, mm, okay, it's um, let me kill this process. I don't know what is happening. Oh, um, can you see my RCO? Yes, we can. Yes, yes. Okay, um, so let me. Um, so, um, yeah, so we have our data set here and now, um, you, when you want to see the column names, so here I have column, um, called, you know, color is this, all this, so you can do what is called call names. So when you run this guy, call names, give you the column names of your data. So you can see here, we have, um, you know, uh, the carrot. We have the cut, we have the color, we have the clarity, we have the depth. So this is the column names. Um, so what I wanna do is like, I wanna plot these, um, you know, uh, this stuff. So here you can see, um, I have the first one, which is, 
uh, mapping. I provide color here, and now I can provide another one here. So what is the meaning of this? So you can see I have my ggplot. What is the data is diamond mapping X um, is X, but I provide a color with cut. So what is cut? So cut, if you look at it here, is the um, type of the gold we have, which is ideal, premium, good, whatsoever. So I provide it to be the color. So you can see it gives me this and it automatically put this. So you can see this is not a good way to do that, right? Um, but what about this one? We provide this something we fill. Um, when we provide the fill, you can see the way it provides the color, right? So I think the fill is more somehow, you know, you can see. So there are many ways you can use the color, you can use the fill. Uh, that's why here they said um uh you can color a bar chart using either the color aesthetic or more usefully using fill. Um, something like this. So when we map, yes. Sorry, is you are telling us that the X bar which you're trying to say to um you know you're supposed to have x and y axis so i didn't see a y axis here ah exactly. x, yeah 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 exactly so one thing you should know is that uh, when you are doing oh so what is happening is that when we are doing uh plotting uh bar chart um remember we um when you are plotting bar chart do you put uh specify the x axis uh so for example here this is a goal called fair this is a goal called god so how many fair do we have? We have like maybe 200. Um, if you go through this, um, let me show you. Oh, ba, 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 ba. Um, okay. okay. Um, uh, we have gold here. Um, we have, uh, um, okay. Uh, let me use something. I don't wanna use something, but let me show you something here. Okay, so diamond. Okay, diamond. Um, filter. I don't want to introduce something um, that the filter. No, it's okay. You can just cut wait. is equals to um, good uh, fair maybe. Okay, fair. Oh. Mm -hmm. So what I mean here, okay, maybe I can. So you can see here, um, I use the data we have here, this data. Um, I filter where the cut is fair. So look at the data set first. Um, these are the data set. We have different kind of um, uh, cut. Ideal or whatsoever. So I want to find out how many fear do we have, which is fear, not very good. Okay. Um, let me see this one. Yeah, fear. How many fear do we have? So here I do it. How can I do it? I say, okay, the data set filter where this is fair. I filter it where cut is supposed to fear. Now look at fear, fear. How many do I have? I have 1610, right? So if you want to float bar chart, it means fair. Here will be 1,600, but you don't need to. You don't need to write this 1,600 to be your x-axis. ggplot tool will do this automatically for you. All you need to do is just provide the variable because it's continuous variable. All provide the variable. The ggplot tool will automatically put it. This is 1,600. This, this is what I explained previously. Maybe you mix this one. So um, as I said, we provide the x and y axis. But in this kind of bar chart, you don't need to provide the X as a ggplot tool automatically draw that for you. Um, but previously, you can see here when we draw this, uh, um, also we provide only the um, for this one uh, we provide X and this one for for y, y. So you can see here we have our Y and see we have our Y. Um, but for this one, you can see we have a new variable called count, right? So count is the one that is reflected here, and ggplot tool automatically calculate the count for you. I don't know if this answer your question. It's okay, thank you. Uh, um, also, you can use like um, uh, this, we have shown this, uh, right. Uh, okay. Um,
Okay, so this is um, basically you can go over it. It's just about stacking the model, um, um, you know, uh, plot when you want to use them. So for example, here, you can have different kind of weight plot. So for example, here we have ggplot2, you provide the mapping, but position here, you say identity. When you say position here, identity, it means here you can uh, see that this each one is stacked like this. You can change not identity. Um, maybe you can say, um, you know, position is filled. That is why you can see for each type of this, we have different kind of stuff. You can also say the position is dodge. So it means like each variable is of this type. So you can see like we have Jomba. This is the mapping. X is called fill clarity. And now the position. So we have different kind of the way we stack, uh, do stacking in bar chart. The position, will be, uh, we have position is dodge, which you will see this. We have position equals to fill, which you see this. We have position, but I think the most important one sometimes is this position equals to dodge, something like this. So you see a lot of kind of uh, uh, visualization using this uh, stuff. We have what is called the notion of overplotting. Um, what we mean by overplotting is that uh, you can see like uh, um, we plot these points and we can see like it has like 126 uh, points, even though there are 234. So this point here, we have many points, but we have only 126 here shows. It means some points overlap some other ones, right? So this um, is called overplotting. And one way to deal with this, to show everything like um, is this, to put a position equals to jitter, something like this, position equals jitter. So you can see like here, many other things like they are now visible, some on top of the other, they are now showing the complete points. Um, so, but this one here is just like some point, uh, you know, uh, and that some other, they are not really um, useful. So you will be seeing you in some way, you will be seeing using this um, argument position equals to jitter. But also this, like we, we use position equals to jitter, you can use something like geom jitter. You can you see that it's um, analogous to using this position equals to jitter. You can remove this guy, I think. Uh, when I remove this guy, I run this. You can see like it's used the same thing. You can use the geom jitter uh, instead of that. You can see still the same thing. Yeah, geom jitter is a shortcut for geom point position equals to jitter because it's usually useful. So this is something also you can. Um, coordinating system. So um, remember, um, ggplot2 all automatically give the coordinate system. It tells you this is it, this is it. But sometimes we want to change the plot. Maybe the x, y should be in the x and the y. So this is, we have different kind of way. Um, coordinating system are probably the most complicated part of ggplot2. So let's look at um, uh, coordinate coordinate plot. So by default, ggplot use coordinate Cartesian. What this means is that um, when we do our, our plotting system, this is coordinate Cartesian. ggplot2 will put x at x axis and y at y axis. This is the normal default. But sometimes you want to turn this around. What we can do is we use this. Um, you can see the same code here but you put something coordinate flip, I mean change, flip the coordinate, change the coordinate, right? Um, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, okay, uh, somebody is asking, oh, locally, um, uh, do we have the recordings? Yes, this, the recordings will, uh, will be available immediately tomorrow in the Slack channel, just look over it. So here we can see when we run this guy, you can see like the, SUV, you can see like this, the horizontal line changed to vertical and the vertical now changed to horizontal. So this is called coordinate plif. Sometimes you want to see like, you can see here, sometimes you may have like 100 in row in your horizontal, 100 variable. So when you have 100 variable at your horizontal, you will not be able to see the plot. So the good thing is just co use coordinate plif, it will change it to this so that uh, this other. So this is a good way to do that. But you also, you can achieve the same thing by changing the variable here. So you can see here the variable already X is class, Y is this. So you can interchange them. That is class, assign it to Y. How uh, this HWY variable assign it to X. So it can achieve the same thing. Can you see that? I, so this is one way, but I think the best way is just use coordinate flip. But remember always you need to from one, 
you need to put this plus sign because we say gg plot two is layered grammar so you specify this you specify another one you specify another one this is a layered approach you specify so you can do many other things we can come as you learn a lot so this is a layered approach so you can see like before we use box plot jump now we show you how to do coordinate flip um but you can do many other ones like you know for um uh um, coordinate flip. So here is for um, some geographical stuff. It show you for geography, which is called um, um, what is it called? Um, coordinate quick map. Coordinate quick map. So here it will show you map of maybe whatsoever you want. You know, given they give a data set here, map data. They are using map data from New Zealand, uh, I think. Yeah, and now they are mapping the data. You can see ggplot two New Zealand data. Uh, AES, they put the longitude, the latitude of the data set because in the data set, okay, let me show us the data. Um, let's see the data. You can see longitude, latitude. Can you see group one? So here, this is what I've provided. AES, longitude, latitude, group is group. And now they provide in the cliff also about black. You can see like automatically put this for you. And this is another one, which is coordinate quick map. It shows you um, something like this. So this is really useful. Um, this is also another one, which is, um, um, you know, uh, coordinate cliff. Uh, we have a data set here. We um, we have a data, the diamond data set as well. And now we want to use coordinate cliff. So coordinate cliff is the one we show here. And there is another one, coordinate polar. So coordinate polar allow you to visualize something like this. Uh, don't forget, you can read the book, Everything is Explained. Um, this session is just like going through the stuff. But uh, don't forget to read the book. That is where you will get the uh, better understanding. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And as well, let's look at finally what is called theme. So what is theme? So you can modify the ggplot when you have um, by what is called theme. Uh, let me show us um, what we can do by that. We have different kind of uh, themes, um, theme classic whatsoever. So let me show us this, uh, an example. So you can see this is our plot. But maybe you are doing, you know, data analysis to put in your paper in journal because you are a PhD student or master student. Sometimes this is not good, right? The loop is not good, right? Uh, maybe you want to see like uh, something better that you can just grab and put in your paper. That is where themes come. So there are many themes available, classic, whatsoever, minimal. You can read more about it in the book. Um, so now here you can see, as I said previously, ggplot2 is grammar layered layer you add one more layer one more layer one more layer. so here we add another layer called theme classic and now we run the same can you see this so this is um uh you know um publication ready plots meaning you can just grab this plot and put in your paper so we use classic theme classic right because this is obvious the way it is you can use theme minimal you can see it minimal um, you know um you can use team boy you know there are different kind of them um uh you can Side them like here. You can go here, tidyverse and GG plot theme, GG themes. So GG themes shows you different kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Um, but also you can this you can see like it's uh, off the shelf, meaning you can just use it. But you can use another one like um to specify the color you want. The, you know, using what you call theme. So theme object allow you to specify many other stuff yourself. Um. Uh, sorry, I took your time. Uh. Just, um, yeah, to summarize, uh, ggplot2, um, we have a plotting template now. What it does is that here, this is it. Um, ggplot2, ggplot, that is the first thing you need to do, provide your data, provide the geom function, maybe geom uh, bar, geom point, whatsoever. Provide the mapping, that is using AES, provide the x, y, whatsoever. Um, position, provide the position you want. Coordinate function, maybe, you want to use like coordinate uh, uh, coordinate plief whatsoever that we saw facade function that we saw facade wrap that allow you to put uh, multiple plot theme function that allow you to put it so this is the structure of ggplot just hold this in your mind this is all about ggplot you can uh, understand and uh, you know do more but this is seven um you know uh parameters that allows you to do any complex stuff uh, plotting with ggplot um, so ggplot uh, is set up the bed plot, geom function, add geometry, which is like geom point, mapping, provide aesthetics, that is the loop, that is the X or whatsoever, uh, start how to transform the data, AES, um, position how to deal with things that overlap, 
coordinate, adjust the coordinate layer and break plot something like that. So um, yeah, so thank you for joining and uh, uh, you can see me uh, running fast to see that we go to the end of the chapter. So what happened is at the end, um, you can see here, not here. Okay, you can see um, everything. So this is the data set, these are some resources. And now these are the recorded videos. So for the previous session, these are the recorded videos. So tomorrow possibly uh, you will see our recordings here for, so that you'll be able to see. It. Oh, thank you very much. Um, uh, I took your time, uh, you know. Thank uh, you so much. Yeah. No problem, thanks, Jim. Yeah, any question? Any question? I'm sorry for taking your time to go over. Um, yeah, Sandra. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, any question? Not from me at the moment. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so who, uh, who will volunteer to present our next chapter? Okay, maybe we can discuss. Um, maybe Sandra, I don't know if you want to volunteer to present the next chapter for us. Yeah, let's let me think about it because next week is uh, I have a, a short oh. course, like ah. Monday to Thursday. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, ah, okay. I think usually what's happened is um I during the week and then we'll just sign up. Um, okay, yeah. So cool. Okay, so maybe so, we'll <laughs> Okay, yeah. So please, anyone that uh, uh, feel free to sign up for this. Um, uh, I share. Let me share the sheet again. Um, uh, let me share the sheet again. Um, yeah. So I share the sheet. Um, please sign up. Uh, write your name if you want to present. Um, feel free, please. If you have any question, whether me chat on Slack, chat me, ask question, I can answer you, and ask question in the Slack group. If you have any, feel free to do that. Um, and uh, I see we see in uh, next week if there is no question. All right. Yeah, see can, I, can I ask you a question? People don't need to no don't need to stay. But oh um, yeah, Sandra, go uh, on. Okay, what's the difference between putting the aesthetic mapping within the ggplot call versus in a geom layer? Like right, because the aesthetic mapping is your ah. x y, and mm -hmm. you can put it. You can give it. In within Geom. a geom like geom bar or or what yeah you can put it also in ggplot right as i said yeah does, does the, it change like is it like no 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 so the okay. thing is no the thing is if you want to have like um multiple plots and using the same data set single data set mm -hmm. um so let me share my screen again so that we can see it more again um okay no 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 why is my okay? Uh, why is my R studio? Um, yeah, please feel free if we are going faster. If I'm going, um, you know, uh, for the yes, okay, okay. So, I think your question, Sandra, is yeah, um, let me see. Mm -hmm. And yeah, where we combine uh, multiple. Okay. Um, so the, the basic idea is like, if you have multiple um, plot you want to combine together. Um, yeah, uh, not this one. If you want to combine multiple plot together, instead for you to put, uh, and they use the same data, so if you if if um instead for you to provide the same yeah this is it this is exact this is what it, the meaning so here you can see we use geom point we use geom smooth and now we provide the aesthetic x and y using the same data we are using this one right mm -hmm. so but here we are duplicating this one this is duplication because this is duplication and in pi and r or programming we don't want to duplicate the something. So the idea is you can take this guy up and put them inside our ggplot. And now those jump, you can just call them without the um, duplication. So now here you can see you write only once, but here you write twice. So you can see like it avoid making mistake because duplication leads to mistake. 
Oh, interesting. Sham, okay. So what if you took from the example that I'm seeing right there and you put the mapping only in geom smooth, would it still give you the same plot? Um, but the, okay, this, you want to do this? Yeah. Okay, then we put it here. Yeah. Something like this? Yes. Like, no, no, but leave the, yeah, exactly, yes. Okay, so let's run this. Because geom point, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you okay. do not specify the aesthetics for geom point. Mm -hmm. Specifying the aesthetic for geom point here, this will mm -hmm. inherit, it, this means use this aesthetic for every other plot that comes below. Got for it. any yeah. geom, yeah, yeah. geom that comes below. I'm trying to think, for example, like say you have it, um, okay, say you just have ggplot data equals mpg, right? Mm -hmm. And then for g on point, you put mapping equals aesthetic x equals y, but say that you want to add some other aesthetic. Yeah. Say that, um, yeah, so it's this not is it. x equals display, but yeah, so x this is it. equals something. So you can, okay. you can see that uh, here yeah. we have okay. mapping, uh -huh. which means this, because this is Okay, this is something like put anything that is common to all of this in ggplot, but something that's specific to H1, put it in H1. So here you can see like okay. the color is specific for geom point, um, but not for this one. So this means that the color class will now be uh, for geom point. You can see geom point, which is scattered, is now colored. Can you see it? It's using class as colored. Can you see that? But yeah. this one, so this one is used. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you understand the point. Yeah, I, I think I, I understand. And then additionally, I guess in Geom Smooth, right? Remember mm -hmm. uh, you had MPG filter by, I think it was like- Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So this is so you as could well. add an extra, was that also given as an aesthetic? No, I don't know. Okay, so that's no. just the filter function. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. so oh. this is it. What this is, this is interesting question. Um, so you can see here, we are using the data. And we mm -hmm. are using this mapping. This mapping, it means it meant for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. It's meant for everyone. But here we said, okay, um, this data, we don't want to use this data, complete data, MPG for mm -hmm. uh, geom smooth. We want to jump point to use a complete data, but geom smooth, we want to subset the data. We don't want to use the uh, compact class. So you can see like we filter it filter MPG class this. So this means that the, the geom point that we plot has sub compact um, among its variable, but the data point we use for geom smooth, there is no, some, so meaning the, the idea is this, you can have separate data on each and every geom. This geom point yeah. is using yeah. the MPG data, but this geom smooth is using data that we subset from MPG. This is the mm -hmm. idea. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah, that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. There's okay. so much you can do. Yeah. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Thank so you. uh but that filter, sorry, that filtering out, does it mean filter and leave as in filter this particular column or whatever yes. and yeah. use filter. the rest? Yeah, exactly, use, exactly. Use the one yes. you filtered to actually do the plot. Which one? Yeah, no, no, no. Use the rest. We use the rest. Um, oh, oh, no, no, no. Filter. No, no, it's filter that filter. one. Mm -hmm. Yes, filter that one. It means you want to use that one. So uh -huh. uh, you are using only one. So we have uh -huh. what is called, if you don't want to use use the rest, you can negate it. We have one, or we have another thing dash to negate. But now here you want to use only one column. Only that is that. why it's using scattered. Because remember scattered plot is using a continuous variable, right? So you are filtering to use scattered plot for the continuous variable, yeah. Thank you. Bye yeah, everyone. Okay, so see you all next week. Thanks, bye bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. See you next week.